Welcome to the Girl Scout Gold Award training. My name is Katie Malden. And I am the Girl Scouts of Kentucky's Wilderness Road Community and Events Program Manager. I am your main contact for all things related to the Gold Award. Thank you for joining us today. Our goal is to help you with your goal of obtaining the Girl Scout Gold Award. Today, you will learn the purpose of the Gold Award, how it can benefit you personally, and the steps toward earning the gold. Through the Gold Award, you not only provide solutions to some of society's biggest problems, like cleaner oceans, equality for girls' education, and greater access to science and technology training, you grow more confident and strengthen skills that will carry you into a successful future in both school and career. Join me in watching the Gold Award Advantage. My name is Julie Averbach, and I am a Gold Award Girl Scout, currently studying at Yale University. In the process of working on my Gold Award project, I developed a lot of special skills that I use in my day-to-day -day life in college. I learned how to write a professional email, how to enlist help from others in my projects. When I look at my college application, it's definitely less daunting because I do know what I'm passionate about and I do know a little more about myself than I did before the Gold Award. It shows that you have that dedication, that you have the skills necessary to take on a leadership role in your community. My first two years of schooling is paid for. Because of my Gold Award, I received a scholarship for $15,000. I've been able to get around $40,000 in college scholarships so far. I'm currently on an, um, a full scholarship exchange program. The Girl Scout Gold Award is the highest award a Girl Scout can earn. Going for the gold will build on all the experiences and skills you've already developed as a Girl Scout. This is your chance to connect your passions to meet a need in the community. You'll work to develop leadership skills as you make a lasting difference in the world around you. The Gold Award project is no easy undertaking. Some people say that they are winning the award, but they are definitely earning it. This project has a minimum of 80 hours of work and is done individually meaning you can't pair with other Girl Scouts on the same project to earn the Gold Award. Although the Gold Award is an independent project, you will rely on a team of people who can support you through this process. This project will take a great deal of your time, dedication, discipline, and effort, but it's all worth the hard work. The Girl Scout Gold Award project is a take action project. So what is a take action project? A take action project will have a root cause and be sustainable and measurable. Let's take a closer look at some of the differences between community service and take action before we review the overall process for earning your Gold Award. A community service project addresses an immediate need for some people right now. A community service project may or may not involve working with a business partner in the community, and a community service partner is not always measurable, meaning you can't really prove that you're making a difference. Finally, a community service project typically only helps people for a very short amount of time. An example of a community service project is a collection drive, such as collecting food for the homeless. Because the Gold Award is a take action project, it needs to address a need at the base of the issue. We call this the root cause. To get to the root cause, keep asking the question, why? This will help you drill down to why the problem exists. A take action project has lasting impact, meaning the project will continue to benefit the community long after the project is done. We'll talk about the root cause and sustainability a bit later on in this training as they are both extremely important. A take action project is also measurable, which means you'll be able to provide evidence that you are making a difference in the community. An example of measuring a project could be giving participants a survey to complete so you can evaluate your project's success, or by tracking the number of people that are impacted through your project. So why earn the Gold Award? For some of you, you've planned to go for the gold for many years, and for others, your interest in earning the gold might be more recent. Every Girl Scout can go for the gold, even if you did not earn your bronze or silver award. Before we dive into the gold award requirements, we want to make sure that you're aware of all the benefits. Aside from leaving a lasting impact on your community, there's many other benefits to earning this prestigious award. For many girls, the experience that comes with Going for the gold sets the foundation for a lifetime of active citizenship. Working on your gold award will help you discover who you are while better in the world around you. You'll be recognized as a distinguished leader in your community. 
You'll develop project planning, networking, research, money management, and communication skills, among many others. You'll gain great confidence, and it will feel amazing when you see the positive impact you're making in your community. Did you know Gold Award Girl Scouts who enter the military immediately rise one rank? Earning the Gold Award might also inspire your future career path. Girls have the opportunity to earn the President's Youth Service Award depending on the number of hours. And girls can apply for the Congressional Award before they start their project. In addition, the Girl Scout Gold Award is recognized by many local, state, and governmental agencies. Gold Award Girl Scouts will be part of an elite group of young women. Only 5.2% of girl members receive this award. Earning your gold will help you stand out on college and employment applications. There are several scholarship opportunities available to Gold Award Girl Scouts. For more information on scholarships, visit girlscouts.org. Gold Award Girl Scouts have the chance to be recognized as a National Gold Award Girl Scout, known as NGAGS. Every year, 10 exceptionally inspiring Gold Award Girl Scouts are chosen as National Gold Award Girl Scouts. This honor is given to Girl Scout seniors and ambassadors whose Gold Award projects demonstrated extraordinary leadership, had a measurable and sustainable impact, and addressed a local challenge related to a national or global issue. All selected NGAGS represent GSUSA as speakers at a number of local and national events, received professional public speaking training, awarded college scholarships, and other opportunities to sustain their Gold Award projects. How are the National Gold Award Girl Scouts chosen? Councils are asked to select their top three Gold Award Girl Scouts using Go Gold Online. Girl Scouts who would like their councils to consider nominating them as an NGAGS are required to use Go Gold Online. GSUSA then ensures a rigorous review process during which each application is thoroughly evaluated by GSUSA staff and an external panel of trusted partners. Once the list is narrowed down, GSUSA's internal NGAGS team selects the top 10. Let's watch a video from one of the 2018 National Gold Award Girl Scouts, Shelby O. from Girl Scouts of California Central Coast. Now, let's take a look at the steps to earning the Gold Award. The first five steps are listed on your screen. We will go into more detail about each of these steps throughout the training. First, you'll need to complete the prerequisite. Next, you will think about issues that you're passionate about and then investigate those issues. Then, you will build your team so you have the support you need throughout the entire process. After you've identified what you want to do for your Gold Award project, you will create a project plan. When your project plan is solidified, you will submit your Gold Award project proposal. Once your project has been approved by council, you will put your plan into motion and make adjustments as needed. Throughout your project, it's important to reflect on all the amazing work you're doing and celebrate your accomplishments with others by sharing your story. Finally, you'll submit a Gold Award final report. We like to share that although girls in grades 9 through 12 can earn their Gold Award, we've heard from girls that if they were to do it over again, they would have tried to finish their gold by 10th grade before the craziness of high school junior and senior years take over. For example, maybe you would like to strive to complete the prerequisite work during ninth grade. So you're ready to submit your project proposal by the start of 10th grade, and then take all of 10th grade to complete your project and submit the final report before you start 11th grade. Now we take a look at each of the steps more closely. First, make sure you are a registered Girl Scout senior or ambassador. At this point in your Girl Scout career, you have probably completed a journey and take action project. Before you can start earning your Gold Award, you must complete the prerequisite, which is two Girl Scout Senior or Ambassador journeys. However, if you are a Silver Award Girl Scout, then you put yourself on the fast track to earning the Gold. 
and only have to complete one senior or ambassador journey. Once you've completed the journey prerequisite, you are ready for the next step, which is identifying issues that you care about. Although this first step might seem very obvious to you, this step is one of the most important steps of the process. You'll need to select a project that has an impact on a community issue or need. Remember, you're going to be spending 80 hours or more of your energy on this project, so you want to select an issue that you're deeply passionate about. We find that for many of the girls that start a Gold Award project and don't complete it, it's because they aren't passionate about the issue they are addressing. Start by taking inventory of your values and skills. What inspires you? What motivates you into action? What skills, talents, and strengths do you have to offer? How do you want to make a difference in the world? What needs to be changed? Pause the video for a minute and see if you can think of at least two things that are important to you, and then also name at least two skills, talents, or strengths that you have. These issues that you care about and your talents and skills could potentially be developed into a gold award project to make a positive impact in the community. When you meet people who you think might be able to help you with your project, write down their names and contact information somewhere in your notes, whether it's a casual conversation with friends and family or a formal interview with someone from your community. You might be surprised how much you can learn from others. As you consider your options, think about where you can make the biggest impact in the community and if that issue matters to you. If you list an issue and can't think of why it's important to you, maybe that's not really an issue you care enough about to explore further. The Gold Award Project is about addressing an issue that exists that you also care about and making it better. Was it easy to think about issues you care about? Or maybe you need some inspiration. On the screen, we've listed several topics for project ideas. Now this list encompasses some very broad topics. For example, for education, you could be passionate about financial literacy for adults or STEM programming for children. Or for disaster preparedness, maybe you care about hurricanes or tornadoes or wildfires because you or someone you know has been affected by one of these disasters. If you would like to, feel free to pause the video and write down any of these topics or other topics that interest you. If you are someone that prefers doing things digitally, we suggest reviewing and reading Go Gold Online, which is Girl Scouts of the USA's website for submitting Gold Award proposals and final reports. You can access Go Gold Online at girlscouts.org backslash go gold online. After you've created an account, the system takes you step by step through the entire gold award process by asking you specific questions along the way. It pretty closely mirrors the steps in your girl guidelines. Also in go gold online, you can save your notes on your progress along the way. Just know if you choose to wait to start in go gold online until the point in which you are ready to submit your project proposal to the council for approval, you will still have to answer all the same questions. That's why we suggest using it as you go along while all the information for each step is fresh in your mind. In the end, it will seem like less work. It's important to know that sometimes Go Gold Online isn't fully compatible with Safari and Chrome web browsers. So if you're having trouble within the site, we recommend changing the web browser. After you have chosen the issue you want to address, it is time to investigate. The investigation step of the project is a critical part of your project plan. Research research, and when you think you've done enough research, research some more. Use your investigative skills to learn everything you can about the issue. What is the issue? Who does this issue affect? How is the community affected by this issue? You want to be able to cite specific facts and statistics that shows your issue demands attention. You can conduct your research using the news, magazines, web articles, or check out websites of organizations related to your issue. Part of doing thorough research is taking advantage of the wide variety of resources that are available to you. This includes people. Most girls team up with community members or organizations to learn more. For example, let's say you're interested in environmental education and you learn there's an organization in your community that provides this type of programming in schools. Reach out to them. Make them one of your resources. Maybe you'll even be able to partner with that organization to broaden the scope of your project. Before you choose your Gold Award topic, review all the notes you took while investigating your identified issue. Many issues are so big they are hard to fix, so you may need to narrow down your focus. A good way to do this is to pick one root cause of the issue and develop a solution to that specific problem. Let's talk more about finding the root cause. Because a Gold Award project is a take action project, it needs to identify the root cause of the issue you selected. As you are researching your issue, think about what the base or root causes are. Drill down to find out where the problem started. What are the underlying factors that led to the existence of the problem? 
Looking at the picture of the tree on the screen, think of the trunk as your community issue. This is the issue that you or your team has identified and want to improve on. Next, looking at the roots of the tree, you will think about what the root cause or base of the main issue could be. Root causes are reasons why the main issue might exist or is not getting better. The key to getting to the root cause or base of an issue is to keep asking yourself why. Now take a look at the lease on the tree. Consider the lease the effects of the main issue on the community. Effects are the results of the issue in our community or what you see as a result of the main issue. Finally, looking at the tree branches, think about all the resources in your community that could help you fix the main issue. These could be the people or businesses in the community that you know care about the issue. Let's give an example. On your screen, you see a picture of the Washington Monument. You may have learned that the Washington Monument is deteriorating, but did you know why? Well, it's because of the strong chemicals needed to clean it. Hmm, you might ask, why are they using such strong chemicals to clean the monument? The answer is because there are a lot of pigeon droppings on the monument. Okay, well, why are there a lot of pigeon droppings? Because there are a lot of spiders on the monument and the pigeons like to eat the spiders. So why so many spiders? Well, there are a lot of spiders because they eat the gnats. Why so many gnats? Where do they come from? Because they are attracted to the lights that are turned on at dusk. So we've drilled down several whys and the root cause. We've concluded that the Washington Monument deteriorating could be pointed to the lights being turned on at dusk. Now it's your turn. On a sheet of paper, draw a tree with a trunk, roots, branches, and leaves. Feel free to pause the video while you draw your tree. Next, think about one of the two issues you identified earlier that you care about and write that on or by the trunk. Now you can complete the rest of the tree. Think about what the base causes of this issue could be and write some notes near the root. Then, think about how that issue affects the community and write those notes by the leaves. Finally, think about all the reasons in your community that could help you explore your issue and help you carry out your project and list those by the branches. Feel free to pause the video again to complete your tree. You can use the slide on the screen to help you remember what thoughts go where on your tree. If you had a difficult time completing this activity, that's okay. That just means you need to do a little more research on your issue. Another tool you might find helpful to get to the root cause of an issue is mind mapping. A mind map is a drawing that offers an overview of a topic and its complex information. Place the community issue in the middle. This is your main issue. Next, add some causes of the issue around the main issue. Then try to connect the causes to each other and to the main issue. You'll see in this example that our main issue, located in the orange box, are car accidents. Two main causes are shown in the purple boxes, which are distracted drivers and bad weather. Digging even deeper, sub-causes are shown in the pink boxes. In our example, texting while driving and drunk driving are leading factors to the main cause, which is distracted driving. And icy roads, fog, and not being able to see road signs are all sub-causes of bad weather. Both bad weather and distracted drivers are main causes of car accidents. The mind mapping method will help you come up with different ways to approach a problem as well as different ways you might go about addressing the issue. At first, creating a project that addresses car accidents might seem too overwhelming. Mind mapping is a great way to narrow down the scope of your project to focus on a specific cause. For example, if texting and driving is the specific cause you want to focus on, you could create signs that are in clear view of high school students as they exit their school's parking lot. Now this would be just one element of your project, but a good example of how you could tweak your project plan to target a specific root cause. You can create your own mind map on paper, or you can find mind mapping templates in Google Online. As you already know, the Gold Award project is an independent project, but you certainly won't be in it alone. You will build and lead a project team to help you make your project successful. The more support you have around you, the easier it will be to complete your project. Your project team should not be limited to friends and family. Reach out beyond your immediate network to include others in your project such as classmates or teachers from school, experts in the community from organizations and businesses that are knowledgeable about your topic, or people who can assist you with specific components of your project. You will need to choose at least one project advisor. A project advisor is a person with expertise in the topic of your Gold Award project. A project advisor will be able to help you get the resources you need to carry out your project. He or she will be able to provide additional background information on your chosen issue and support you in solving problems as they arise. A project advisor works closely with you throughout the process. 
When you were doing your investigation about your topic, did anyone from the community stand out to you that could serve as your project advisor? If so, reach out to that person or people and explain your interest in the issue and the specific types of support they could provide you. Share background information about the Gold Award, the Gold Award process, and the goals of your project. And give the potential advisor an idea of the time commitment they will need to make to you and your project. Keep in mind, your project advisor cannot be your parent or troop leader. Here are a few examples of an appropriate project advisor. If you're working to provide environmental education programming, you might reach out to a nature center staff. If your project involves creating a disaster preparedness program, you might reach out to state or federal emergency management agencies or the Department of Health Services. If you plan to address child obesity, your project advisor might be a doctor or nurse in the health and wellness field. Although you are required to have a project advisor that is not your troop leader or parent, your troop leaders and parents are still valuable members of your project team. They offer guidance and support, check in with you on your progress, and can read over your project proposal and final report before you submit them. They will also be more familiar with the Gold Award process and all of your council policies and procedures. Know that your parents, troop leaders, other Girl Scout volunteers, and council staff all want to see you succeed and are here to support you. But no matter how many adults you have supporting you through your project, you need to remember that this is your project and you should take the lead. You are capable of doing your own research, sending your own emails, making your own phone calls, completing your own paperwork, and following up with your support team and council as needed. We know that you are very busy with school, after school activities, part-time jobs, and other responsibilities. However, you are still capable to lead a Gold Award project if you are dedicated to it. We've talked about identifying issues, doing tons of research, and building a solid project team. At this point in the process, your next step is to start thinking about what you plan to actually do for your project. To help you figure this out, start by setting some project goals. Here are several questions you can ask yourself to help you set your project goals. What is your project? Why does it matter? What would you like to achieve with your project? Who will it help? Do you foresee any obstacles? What supplies will you need? How will you measure your success? What difference do you intend to make in the world? How much time will it take to finish your project? And how will you make lasting change? We're going to talk more about budgeting in a bit, but first let's spend some time on making sure your project has lasting impact. This is the sustainability requirement. Incorporating sustainability into your Gold Award project doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to develop your project in such a way that keeps going even after you've completed it. Let's discuss the difference between a sustainable project and a project that does not last. An example of a project that is not sustainable is to collect blankets and canned food to donate to the Red Cross. You've only helped them for a very short amount of time. Blankets and food get used up over time, and the Red Cross is back in the same situation where it started, waiting for more donations. Now, here's an example of a project that is sustainable. Let's say you want to address disaster preparedness. For your project, you're going to organize a safety day at the local community center. Various local and state agencies will be present to distribute educational material to families and provide hands-on activities that will help families understand how to be prepared for different emergencies. For example, the Red Cross could be there to help families start building their disaster kit to be prepared in power outages. They could hand out supplies like whistles and a basic first aid kit. In addition, they would provide a list of everything to include in a disaster kit so the families could finish creating their kit when they got home. This project has an educational component to it because you are distributing materials and it would be sustainable. Another way to incorporate sustainability would be to build a structure or have something installed that would be in place for years. For example, if you notice that the footbridge over a stream on your favorite hiking trail is falling apart, and is unsafe, you could work with your local parks or trail agency to lead a project that tears down the old footbridge and replaces it with a new one. Or if you were to create a new club at your school for girls that want to increase access to engineering programs, you could find a teacher at your school or another school to continue the club after your project is done. In all of these examples, the projects have a lasting impact on the community. Let's look at a few more project examples that we would not consider sustainable and give you a chance to think about how you might improve the project to incorporate sustainability. Here is our first example. Olivia recruited help from her school sewing club to make more than 200 stuffed animals for children's hospitals. She included a handmade get well card with each animal. This project is not sustainable. Pause the video and think about what you could do to incorporate sustainability. 
Did you decide to incorporate sustainability by having the sewing club or some other group take on this activity as an annual event? Or did you incorporate sustainability in some other way? Let's take a look at another example. Mary worked with Pleasant View Elementary School to become a teacher's aide for six months. She worked directly with students, assisting them with homework, helping lead activities from the teacher's curriculum, and design bulletin boards for the school. Again, this project is not sustainable. Pause the video and think about what you could do to incorporate sustainability into this project. Did you adapt this project so instead of Mary being a teacher's aide, she worked with the teacher to establish a homework or reading buddy program here in younger children with older children at the school? And the school has agreed to continue the program in years to come? Or maybe you thought of another way to make this project sustainable. Let's take a look at one more example. Sophia partnered with Whisper and Willow's Senior Center, and over one summer, she mowed the lawn, planted a garden, and painted a large maintenance garage. This project is not sustainable. Pause the video one more time and think about what you could do to incorporate sustainability into this project. Maybe you decided to create a volunteer match program for the Senior Center that matches students from the local middle and high schools up with seniors in the center to meet with them on a regular basis. Or maybe you established an ongoing gardening program at the Senior Center for the elderly residents to learn about planting and harvesting. There is no one way to make a project sustainable. You need to be creative to figure out how your project will create a lasting impact. When going for your goal, you also want to give some thought to how far this problem extends. Is it happening only in your neighborhood? Is it affecting cities nationwide? Or is it prevalent in other countries? This especially comes into play when it's time to think about your project's global link. Consider how to connect your project to an issue that affects people in other parts of the country and other parts of the world. For example, if other communities are experiencing the same issue you have been researching, how are they handling it? Think about how you can share what you've learned to help others in need beyond your immediate neighborhood. Maybe you can connect with an organization that is working on the same issue in another city or country and share your insights. Or maybe you can create a website or blog to reach a larger audience about the issue you are addressing. Think about how you're going to tell the world about your project. Now that you have a better understanding on how you can create a project that lasts and what the goals of your project are, it's time to create your detailed project plan. Create a list of all of the tasks that need to be completed for your project from the start to the end. Include how the task will be done, how long each task should take, and any deadlines or target dates associated with each task. You can see an example on your screen. This can also be found in Go Gold Online, or you can create your own version. Either way, this will be a necessary guide as you start your project. This step is critical to the success of your project. Cutting corners in project planning is a recipe for disaster, no matter what the reason. The more time you put into planning the details of your project, the smoother your project will go and the easier it will be to work through challenges that you may face. Because let's be realistic, nothing ever goes completely as planned. Here's an example of a project plan that didn't go as expected. Let's say for a girl's project, she is working with her local community center to establish a community garden program. One part of her project requires her to actually build a garden. According to her timeline, she will be building and installing the framing around the garden in February. That most likely won't work. Kentucky will most likely have snow on the ground in February. Even if there isn't snow, the ground will still be frozen and would be nearly impossible to dig into. So what could she do? She could either move her project up earlier or back later so that when she's at the point she needs to build the framing of the garden, it's warm enough outside so the ground won't be frozen. So when thinking about how you're going to reach your goals, you need to think about how much time each task will take. You also need to consider when one task needs to be completed before you can start another task, or when you can work on certain tasks at the same time. And be realistic about how long you think each task will take. Will it really take you an hour to write one email? Make sure that you are also keeping track of your hours as you go along. All the time you spend working on your project counts towards the 80 hour minimum. This includes research time, calling and talking to experts, and finally doing your project. It all counts. Goal work projects don't need to be expensive in order to be successful. In fact, 
some of the projects that have the biggest impact are the ones where girls do more and spend less money. But sometimes we know that a project might require you to need extra money or supplies to get it done. Discuss with your troop the needs for funds and supplies for your project. Keep in mind that you and your Girl Scout sisters can decide to use a portion of your troop's treasury to fund your project. If your troop treasury is not enough to cover the expenses of your project, consider adapting your project so the expenses aren't so high. Or you can do additional money earning activities to cover the expenses. In order to figure this all out, first you will need to create a budget. Take a look at the budget template on the screen. To create a budget, you need to start by thinking of all the expenses that might be associated with your project. For example, you may need to pay for additional insurance for non-Girl Scout members to attend your safety fair, or you may need to print copies of a brochure that you are distributing throughout your school for the new engineering club you established. You have to estimate what your total expenses are before you figure out how you're going to cover them. Because a gold award project is a take action project, you can't profit in the end, meaning you shouldn't have money left over. This is why estimating your expenses is so important to figure out how much money you need to cover those expenses. Now let's talk about how to get the money and supplies you need for your project if your troop treasury isn't enough. Since our Girl Scout Council is a nonprofit, the government gives us specific rules that we have to follow. Since you're a member of this organization and your Gold Award project is a Girl Scout activity, you fall under these rules too. Here are the basic guidelines. We're going to start with what you can't do. You cannot raise money for another organization as Girl Scouts. This means you can't sell handmade Valentine's Day cards and tell customers that you are donating the proceeds to an animal shelter. And you can't hold a benefit dance to raise money for someone's upcoming surgery. You can't ask for pledges for a walkathon to benefit breast cancer. And you can't host games of chance, such as a raffle, contest, or bingo night. You can't host product parties in your home, such as a clothing line or skincare products and you can't generate profit from a company's Girl Scout night sales. Both of these examples gives the impression that Girl Scouts endorses that business. Now that we've told you what you can't do, here are some examples of what you can do. You may obtain support by seeking project materials from individuals such as friends, family, church, school, or other organizations that you're a member of. Your troop can hold a car wash, sell handmade birdhouses, or host an event for younger Girl Scouts and charge an entrance fee. You could collect cans or ink cartridges and turn them in for money, or your troop could get paid to provide services in the neighborhood, such as shoveling snow or raking leaves. Just keep in mind, if you want to do additional money earning activities for your project, you must participate in the fall product and cookie sale activities first. In order to raise additional monies for your project, you must submit a request with your project plan to council. Solicited funds are to be used exclusively for your Gold Award project, which should have a defined project scope. You may be wondering how the donations will be processed. Any donations for your Gold Award project must be processed through council so a donor receipt can be provided. Then council will sweep the funds into your separate Gold Award bank account. The best way for you to open a Gold Award bank account is to add a second savings or checkings account to your pre-existing troop account. You will need to work with your troop leader to do this. Council must be informed when you open and close your Gold Award project bank account and when you receive any donation. You should keep a detailed list of what the funds were spent on and take pictures of all receipts. Additionally, you should confirm with each donor what you should do if there are leftover funds and remember to close the bank account once your project is complete. Communication is extremely important during this project. We understand that our policies around money earning and charitable giving can be a bit confusing, so please reach out to the council if you have any questions about what is allowed and what is not allowed. And if you're thinking about applying for a grant fund, reach out to council first. When you get to this point in your process, you must get council's approval before you can start working on your project. There are several steps to the approval process. On your screen, you can see the overview. Let's review all the steps and then talk about the steps in more detail. First, you will submit your project proposal to the council. Once you submit your project proposal, you will receive an email from council with initial feedback. Ideally, we hope to approve your project immediately after your proposal submission. 
If your project is approved, you will receive an official approval email confirmation and then you can start your project. If your project is not approved, you will have follow-up work to do before you can obtain council approval. Let's dig a little deeper into each step of the approval process. If you haven't started using Go Gold Online, you will need to do that now. Again, this is Girl Scouts of the USA's platform for submitting gold award proposals and final reports to your council. But there's also lots of tips and resources for each step, which is why we highly recommend using Go Gold Online from the beginning rather than waiting until this point in the process. Take the time to carefully read all the information in Go Gold Online and provide thoughtful, detailed, well written responses. You want to paint a clear picture of what you are setting out to do. The more details you provide, the more likely we will fully understand the goals of your project and can provide you with meaningful feedback without having to ask you a lot of additional follow up questions. Complete all of the questions in the online system through step five. Note that most girls forget to upload their proposed timeline and budget, and this can hold up the process for getting their project approved. So before you finish step five and go gold online, be sure to upload your completed proposed timeline and budget. Proposals must be submitted at least three weeks prior to starting your project. Once you complete step five in the system, the council is automatically notified that you have submitted your project proposal. Allow one to two weeks to receive an email response with feedback. When your project is approved, you can continue working on your project until its completion. You've done a great deal of research and you have a solid plan that has been approved by council. Now it's time to lead your team and actually do your project. While you are doing your project, here are some things that you'll want to keep in mind. For starters, make sure to stay in touch with everyone on your project team. This includes your troop leaders, your project advisor, any businesses you are partnering with, council, and your friends and family. Plan to be flexible throughout your project as you continue to learn about the issue you are addressing or when speed bumps arise. Consult with the safety activity checkpoints and volunteer essentials to ensure you are following the Girl Scouts of the USA and GSWRC guidelines and procedures. Don't forget to take pictures and video along the way. This will help you share your story with others. You can use the time log and budget log in Go Gold Online to track your progress if you want, or you can keep track of your hours and budget information in your own way. And if you have a question, please ask, reach out to someone on your team, or get in touch with council staff. Everyone is here to help you succeed in earning your gold award. Most importantly, make sure you have tons of fun doing your project. This is where you will see all of your hard work pay off. You have come a long way. Throughout your project, you will want to take time to reflect on what you have accomplished. Here's an idea of questions you can ask yourself to reflect on your project. What did you discover about yourself? What did you learn about others who are also addressing the same problem? And what impact did your Girl Scout Gold Award project have on your community? You have put a massive amount of energy, passion, and time into your Gold Award project, and we want to tell the world. You have put a massive amount of energy, passion, and time into your Gold Award project, and we want you to tell the world. Telling other people about your project, either during your project or after it's completed, not only helps you to celebrate your accomplishments, but it's also a great way for the community to see the impact you've made. Sharing your project with others might even inspire them to get involved. There are many different ways you can share your story. You can use social media or create a website or blog telling others about your project, or you can make a video about your project and post it online. You could give a presentation to community members or a local club that serves your community. You could even share your story with younger Girl Scouts, which might even inspire them to go for their gold. One last time, we are going to ask you to pause the video, write a few ideas down on how you can reflect, share your story, and celebrate. Go ahead and pause now. Don't forget to thank everyone that helped you with your project. This is a very important step of the process. The organizations and people you've worked with will really appreciate your kind words for their support. When you are done with your project, go back into Gold Gold Online and complete the final two steps providing all the summary information about your project. If you don't use the time log and budget log in Go Gold Online and use Excel or Word instead, then you'll have an opportunity to upload your final time log and final budget during the last step in Go Gold Online. Note that the final time log and final budget are required when you submit your final report to Council. 
Once you submit your final report, the process that plays out is similar to the process when you submitted your proposal. And your completed project will receive final approval from the council. Each year, our council holds a highest award celebration for current members. This is an opportunity for girls who have earned the gold award to be recognized for their accomplishments. Families, troop leaders, and project advisors are encouraged to attend the celebration with you. Girls that attend the event will receive their gold award pin, compliments of the council, in addition to a gold award certificate from GSUSA, among many other commendations requests on your behalf. To be recognized at the gold award ceremony, the gold final report is due January 15th. This is an annual deadline. That means if you wish to attend the event in a particular year, then you need to submit your final report by January 15th of that same year. If you're not done with your project by January 15th, that's okay. You will be invited to the ceremony the following year. Just remember the official deadline to complete your project, including the final report, is September 30th after your 12th grade year. Be sure to also celebrate your accomplishments with your troop and family. You deserve all the recognition you can get. Be sure to continue to utilize all the tools that we've talked about during the training. You can also come back to this online training at any time if you want a refresher. If you have any questions about the Gold Award, I encourage you to reach out to me at 1-800-475-2621 or gswrc.org. We are happy to assist you on your way to earning the gold. At this point, you may be feeling a bit overwhelmed or anxious, or maybe you are feeling ready and motivated to get started. Pursuing the Gold Award is no easy task. It is a big project. It will require your time and energy, even when you are juggling so many other things in your life. But we promise you, it will be worth it. This is your time to sparkle and have significant impact on your community. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about the Girl Scout Gold Award. We wish you all the best and have tons of fun getting started on your project. We look forward to receiving your project proposal when you are ready. Thanks again and good luck.